Praise be Jesus and Mary. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I and them and you and me, that they may be brought to perfection as one. In today's gospel passage from John chapter 17, you know, Jesus concludes his priestly prayer to the Father, praying for the gift of unity among his disciples. And this unity would be accomplished by various means, but especially by the gift of the Holy Spirit, you know, the very life and soul, the principle of unity you know, for the mystical body of Christ, the church. We are now on the seventh day of the Novena in preparation for Pentecost Sunday. We might ask ourselves, you know, are we preparing well you know, for this solemn feast day, the birthday of the church? Is our preparation anything like that of the first disciples gathered around Our Lady in the upper room, all united in intense prayer? How important you know, this novena is, but we take it for granted usually, at least some of us do. St. Alphonsus makes this comment on this novena. The novena to the Holy Spirit is the chief of all novenas because it was the first that was ever celebrated and by the Holy Mother of God with the apostles in the supper room. It was rewarded by many wonders and gifts, principally the descent of the Holy Spirit, a gift merited for us by the passion of Jesus Christ himself. And during this novena, we are to unite ourselves in spirit you know, to Our Lady and those first disciples in the upper room and pray earnestly you know, for a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us and the whole church so desperately needed you know, in, uh, today's, in today's world. This action of the Holy Spirit on, on the part of the church or towards the church, namely, uh, the sanctification of all the faithful. You know, that is uh, the Holy Spirit's chief mission, as it were, and that's something that uh, greatly needs to be done, you know, our sanctification. We may not be able to dedicate as much time you know, during this, these, these days of you know, preparation for Pentecost you know, and praying the Novena. We may not be able to dedicate as much time to intense prayer as those first disciples did you know, in the Cenacle, but we should at least pray as generously and as intensely you know, as we can. And the good thing is that we need not wait until the end of the Easter season every year in order to make this novena, but rather we can you know, do so at practically any time of the year, you know, maybe even every day. You know, some people make of it a perpetual novena. It's kind of a misnomer, you know, perpetual novena. But some people do that. You know, pray every day you know, to the Holy Spirit you know, for his gifts. St. John Vianney offers this wise counsel. Without the Holy Spirit, all is cold. Therefore, when we feel we are losing our fervor, we must instantly start a novena to the Holy Spirit to ask for faith and love. One beautiful prayer to the Holy Spirit that we might use is the well-known prayer composed by Cardinal Mercier. It's a short, simple, yet powerful prayer, especially if we take up the Cardinal's advice and when we pray it to spend a few minutes, more or less, you know, maybe each day, in silence, repeating this prayer. O Holy Spirit, life of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, strengthen me, console me, teach me what I must do, command me. I promise you that I will submit to all that you desire from me and accept all that you permit to happen to me. Only make me know your will. Amen. 
Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen.